Hi, I'm Toby Meltzer and I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm using this video to introduce metoidoplasty with labial advancement flaps for urethroplasty, which is written by Nick Esmond and myself. What I describe in the article is actually a variation of the ring metoidoplasty that was originally was described by Takamatsu in 2009. What I modified from the original description of the procedure was that, first of all, I divide the ring uh, which gives more length to the labial flaps uh, and having more length allowed me to reduce or eliminate the need for anterior vaginal mucosal flaps. These flaps I think can be problematic due to uh, the thinness of them and, and cause, uh, are more prone to uh, both uh, diverticulum as well as uh, creating a recess behind the urethra. A single longitudinal suture line is only required from the junction of the neo and native urethra. So I think this is less prone to strictures and fistulas. And the vaginectomy was always performed in order to uh, buttress and uh, get a secure closure of the pars fixa. Secondary procedures like scrotoplasty, tissue expanders, testicular implants, and monzoplasty were performed in approximately 85% of the patients. I've used this technique now, which I've described in detail in the article since 2010, in a total of 91 patients with a low complication rate, particularly for strictures and fistulas. Retrograde elevation of the flaps allows for a complete release of the ventral cordy, which ultimately translates into uh, no restriction of length uh, when, when performing this way. Buccal mucosa is not needed and is not used. And 88% of the patients reported a strong stream and the ability to avoid while standing, which I think is an important, obviously an important aspect of this uh, desire to have the procedure. Thank you very much.